Welcome to PlayStation News, Rumors and Leaks. Let's take a look at what's been happening over the last few days in the world of gaming. Guys, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button, strap yourselves in and let's get cracking. We all know by now that Insomniac Games has been hacked. And what's more disturbing is that Insomniac Games has seen over 1.3 million stolen files distributed online after it was hacked by ransomware group Rysidia earlier this month. The group had previously threatened to leak the data if it wasn't paid, with the files containing everything from personal data to upcoming software. According to a report on Cyber Daily, the hacker group has now posted over 1.6 terabytes worth of data on Insomniac Games, totaling more than 1.3 million files. It is believed that about 98% of the data obtained in the hack has now been leaked online, with the group claiming that not sole data was uploaded. Therefore, somebody has purchased some data uh, from Insomniac Games. So among the files includes information and assets for Marvel's Wolverine, as well as a publishing agreement with Marvel that leaves the way open for future games by Insomniac. In addition to game footage and concept art, there's also personal information of employees, and this report suggests that this personal data includes passports, employee forms, and internal chat logs. We know that last week, ransomware group Rysidia threatened to expose sensitive data about the company, its employees, and its upcoming games if it wasn't paid for the data. It then published data online which appeared to corroborate its claim that it had successfully hacked the Sony-owned studio, including an annotated screenshot from Insomniac's upcoming Wolverine game. The group then threatened to publish the stolen data within seven days, but first offered it for auction with a starting price of 50 bitcoins, which is about $2 million. Now, according to Cyber Daily, Rysida has followed through with its threat and posted more than 1.3 million files, totaling 1.67 terabytes to the Darknet leak site. Around 98% of the hacked data has been leaked and Rysidia has claimed that not sold data was uploaded, implying that about 2% may have been sold to somebody. We don't know who, but someone's clearly purchased some data from Insomnia with a view of uploading that data at a future date. People have already started downloading and sifting through the files, which appear to include a host of information and assets for the upcoming Wolverine game, publishing agreement with Marvel that promises future titles and internal HR documents. The stolen documents also include information of unannounced games stretching as far ahead as 10 years. Rysina's initial threat came last week and it appeared to include evidence that it had acquired employee passport scans, personal documents related to Spider-Man voice actor Yuri Lovental, internal emails and confidential documents. It's not yet clear how much of this confidential information has been included in the hack, nor is it clear if any of it was part of the section that may have been sold onto another party. Is it a shock? You tell me guys, is it a shock? Is it a shock to hear that companies are getting hacked? I mean, I used to think it was, but I don't anymore. I'm, am I surprised it's Sony? They've been hacked before. I would have thought they would have had better security systems, cyber security systems, but it's sad to see, definitely. I am sad to see that Insomniac Games has been hacked. It's terrible that the work and effort that's gone in to develop a plan for the next decade, which is, a lot of it is obviously still work in progress, but it's been posted online for everyone to scrutinize that. I, I, I feel terrible for Insomniac Games, but you know, hopefully not just Sony, but other big corps pull the fingers out and um, learn how to tighten up their internal security and cybersecurity systems to prevent this type of hack from happening again. It's terrible to see, but let's hope, um, let's hope it doesn't affect the, the Wolverine game being delayed. That's the, I really don't want that. In my mind, I've got end of 2024, maybe early 2025 for the game to come out. I hope it's not, you know, 2026 or something. That's that'd be crazy. Uh, anyhow, let's move on. Sony Interactive Entertainment has filed a patent that describes the ability to dynamically adjust the difficulty of a game based on the player's skill level. The patent is titled Adaptive Difficulty Calibration for Skills-Based Activities in Virtual Environments and describes the ability to adjust difficulty depending on how the player is performing. The collected data may be evaluated to identify whether a user gaming performance level corresponds to an expected level of performance. When a user 
gaming performance level does not correspond to an expected level performance, parameters that change the difficulty of the game may be changed automatically. It's very interesting. Since games today have uh, fixed levels of difficulty, a user that enjoyed playing the game at one level may not enjoy the game very much at a higher level of difficulty. The patent describes various parameters that this technology can affect, including characteristics pertaining to movement speed, strength of character, number of enemies, difficulty in enemy AI and others. I mean, to me, it sounds really interesting. Um, things can also can be incrementally, in, incrementally raised or decreased over time. Again, sounds very interesting, especially the enemy uh, difficulty, the enemy AI, number of enemies. It sounds quite dynamic, actually. Sony also argues that current video games featured unbalanced enemies and challenges with sections either being incredibly easy or too difficult. It should be noted that few games actually already utilize this type of technology, but from the looks of things, Sony is eager to expand on it and implement it in many games to come. As with all patents, however, this doesn't necessarily mean it will actually happen. Personally, I think it's brilliant. Not everyone is going to agree, but I think if this is implemented, I think it'll be like a, an optional feature where you have to switch it on or switch it off. It's a bit like where you kind of change your graphical settings, fidelity uh, or performance mode. I think this will be a, some kind of an AI assisted difficulty on or off. And if you switch it on, then the difficulty will change. The number of enemies may change if you're playing a particular level or if you start to go past a level too quickly and you start to level up too quickly, the difficulty changes and it gets harder and harder bit by bit. I think it's great. The number of times I've played games where on normal mode, sometimes it feels a little bit too easy. You crank it up, you crank up the difficulty slightly harder, but the next level is very difficult. So I think there's a nice balance here if it, if it, if it really can genuinely figure that stuff out. So I think the difficulty automatically adjusting as you play, I think it should be fun, especially for those who players who want a challenge. Okay guys, if you like the video so far or find the video interesting or informative, do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button. That really helps out the video a great deal. If you want to support me as a content creator, then consider becoming a channel member. The links and details are below in the description. Make sure you check it out. Okay, moving on to the next bit. Xbox the consoles are getting absolutely battered by PlayStation. It's no secret that the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S have not exactly set the world alight. There are multiple reasons for this, some of which I'll explain a little bit later on, but the news only seems to worsen the Xbox brand. Xbox sales in Europe have dropped by over a quarter since last year, while PS5 sales have nearly quadrupled. Xbox sales in the EU market dropped by 27% over the last year. PlayStation 5 grew by 376%. I mean, we're off the charts here. We're, we're talking chalk and cheese. We're in we're in different leagues. When we talk talk about the PlayStation. It's completely different. Notably, the figure does not include Germany or the UK. The Series X remains third in the UK market behind the PS5 and the aging Nintendo Switch. It's also worth noting that the PS5 has benefited from Sony restocking in the EU instead of prioritizing the US market like it did last year. This may partially explain why the PS5 sells fell by about 20% in the US, though Xbox and Switch also experienced similar dips of around 20%. Either way, it's fair to say that the, the new Xbox consoles have failed to find an audience in Europe. Microsoft's consoles have never been the best sellers of any generation, while the original Xbox outsold the GameCube and 360 was a serious rival to the PS3, Xbox One sales fell way short. 2013 consoles sold about 58 million units in total compared to the uh, PS4 which sold over 117 million units and so far Microsoft has sold about 21 million Series X and S consoles compared to the PS5's nearly 50 million units. While there's time for a turnaround it's looking increasingly less likely especially with the PS5 Pro likely releasing next year in 2024. There are two big reasons why Xbox is failing to sell as many consoles as the PlayStation. This is in my opinion, but I think it's factual. It's pretty obvious, really. The first is that you have to give people a reason to buy the console. The ability to play your new Xbox games anywhere from day one is a big problem. It doesn't give it an incentive to people to go out and buy a console because you don't need it to play new games. You can play new games via Game Pass on your TV, tablet, phone, on your PC, right? You can play it pretty much anywhere. So it makes the console obsolete. You don't need it. That's reason one. The second reason why Xbox is failing to sell as many consoles is the lack 
of absolute quality AAA bangers. Now, some people would argue that games like Halo, Redfall and Starfield are at that level, the level of a AAA quality game. I would disagree to some extent. Yes, those games look and feel like AAA games, but they seem to be missing something. It's hard to explain whether it's soul, character. I don't know, when you scratch beneath the surface of those games, they lack something. Part of me feels that those games come out and drop into Game Pass, and the feeling is that, well, if there's a problem, we'll patch it later, right? I just get this feeling that's what happens, who cares? It's in Game Pass, you get it for free, so to speak, right? You pay, what is it, 15 bucks a month or whatever it is, you get the game, what are you complaining about? So I think that there's a mentality around that, but that's the problem. If Game Pass wasn't for day and date releases and you had to make the best possible game, I'm fairly confident that games like Halo, Starfield and Redfall would not have a public release date. They would have been quality tested multiple times internally behind the scenes. And then when about six months away from an internal release date, they would be publicly given a release date, knowing that those games are almost per perfect and have had about six months worth of testing and polishing. This is the kind of formula that PlayStation is using right now. You can only play their new games on a PS5, which means you have to have one. Whether you like it or not, if you want to play those games, you've got to have a PS5. Further down the line, the games will drop onto PC and uh, PS Plus. But that could be in six months, could be a year, could be two. Who knows? But they will come out eventually onto the subscription service, but not day and day. This gives gamers a reason and an incentive to go out and buy a PS5. You might not like it, but you've got no choice. You want to play those games, you need a PS5 day and date games. The devs also know that the games need to be pretty much perfect on launch because there's no excuse like it's free on PS Plus. So the devs have to get it pretty much perfect every time. And if you look back at most of the big AAA game releases, they've all delivered probably the only exception being Days Gone, which had a few more bugs than usual, but eventually got sorted out. And if Microsoft can give people an incentive to buy an Xbox and back that up with quality AAA games, that offer depth with their games, then they will have a winning formula. And moving on to our final piece, Death Stranding creator Hideo Kojima has announced the number of players who've played Kojima Productions' debut game across PS4, PS5 and PC. Calling it the studio's first child, Kojima revealed that Death Stranding has reached more than 16 million players worldwide as of December 2016, 2023. In a series of tweets as part of Kojima Productions' eighth anniversary, Kojima thanked 16 million porters for playing Death Stranding. Quite an impressive feat for a new IP. Kojima has since been working on Death Stranding 2 alongside a Microsoft game called OD. Both games have yet to be given a release date. In a separate tweet, Kojima said that creating things isn't a job for him. It's something that he enjoys doing irrespective of age and he doesn't see himself retiring anytime soon, which is great news and great to hear. Kojima further revealed that when he started his own company, everyone opposed the idea, including his friends, colleagues, and even relatives. They said it was impossible without the financial and organizational strength of a company. That's what Kojima goes on to say. However, someone must prove that, that it's an old fashioned way of thinking. Young creators must be given freedom of choice. This is one of the reasons why I continue to create things, he goes on to say. It's great hearing that Death Stranding player count has hit 16 million players. Surely an update on Death Stranding 2 is imminent as we head into 2024. That's going to do it for the video, guys. Thank you for watching. And if you could do me a favor whilst you're here, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe buttons. And I'll catch you on the next PlayStation News, Rumors and Leaks video.